Welcome back to the Blue White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast. He's Ryan Snyder. I'm Greg Pickle, and we are going to break down Penn State Class of 2023 and the dream scenario for Penn State in the next cycle. Obviously, the Nittany Lions just coming off of the bye week. So James Franklin and his staff spent the last seven days hitting the road, seeing commits, seeing prospects that are underclassmen, prospects who are seniors, and so on and so forth. So it's a good time to have this conversation as the Nittany Lions prepare to get back on the field. A noon game, a Waits us with Illinois at Beaver Stadium. ABC will televise that contest. So there's going to be a lot of that to cover this week. But let's get into this co- topic of today's podcast, Ryan. It's a dream class for 2023. So what does that mean? Of course, Penn State already has three commitments in. But this is how things will play out from here based on what we currently know. It, what would be a best-case scenario for Penn State? So first, how are you doing? Yeah. How excited are you to look ahead to this? And what do you think the class of 2023 holds for Penn State at this early juncture? Well, let, let's let's start with this. There's not much else to talk about right now, right? I mean, <laughs> I could give you a Jay Sean Barham every week, and I'm just pulling stuff out of the air for that one, let's be real. So to me, I thought this would be a good time to just kind of talk about how I see uh, the class laying out in a, in a best-case scenario. We know that – Never thing ever goes perfectly to plan in recruiting, right? I mean, it's something's going to change at some point down the line. Uh, you know, a new school is going to offer a player that we project to Penn State now, and they're going to pull them. It just it happens. But uh, for me, I'm trying to put together, and by me doing this, I'm trying to put two things together. One, guys that Penn State really wants, and then two, guys that I think are realistic. So, for example, I can run through and talk about how Dante Moore is their top quarterback prospect, and Luke Montgomery is is you know the number one offensive tackle prospect. I, I think that's a little bit of debate for a number one tackle, but my point is, these are guys who I know Penn State really likes, but it's going to be hard to get them. Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about them and then discuss them, but I also want to mix in some guys who may not be quite as highly ranked, but I think are much more realistic. And then oh by the way, they're higher on Penn State's board than maybe what their rivals ranking makes them seem. So that's kind of how I'm going to approach this. Um, now, one other thing I will say is that uh, we're trying to project numbers for a class that doesn't sign for more than a year. And right. that's literally like impossible to do right now. I mean, if I, if you were able to ask James Franklin about that, he, he would genuinely tell you that uh, until guys transfer out, uh, they make sure everybody signs. And then, you know, any injuries or whatever in the spring, it just, it's, it's impossible to truly project right. that right now. So, how I see the class, I, I see it probably being a little under 25. I mean, just from preliminary early talks, it was kind of like, you know, it'll be over 20, but somewhere probably below a, quite a, a full class. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of aiming for 22, 23 uh, in, in this, uh, I won't call it a drill, but whatever, in this podcast, I guess. Um, now, I haven't quite laid it all out uh, on pen and paper yet. So if we go to 26 or 27, feel free to, um, you know, bitch at me in the YouTube comments. But uh, for now, I'm just going to try and give you guys the guys or give you my thoughts on who's most realistic. And then, uh, you know, Greg kind of give a a counterpoint to that or, or somebody who I'm not thinking about. Let's start at quarterback then, obviously. Again, so let's just yeah. reset here what Penn State has at this point. Again, the ground rules for this are pretty simple. Realistic, we're not just going to run through every five-star that Penn State has offered and say that a dream scenario would mean getting commitments from those guys because that's just a waste of everyone's time. So we're mm-hmm. looking for guys who are both realistic and high on Penn State's board, maybe not as high in the recruiting rankings. We are pitting, shooting for about a 25-member class, but it's impossible to tell exactly where things will stand. And, of course, we're looking at this on a October 18th, and by December 18th, this could look different. By f- March 18th of 2022, this will look different. So yeah. keep all that in mind. But let's start with uh, the offensive side of the ball. So Penn State has two commits on offense right now. Alex Birchmeyer, four-star offensive tackle from Virginia, and Mega Barnwell, who Matthias Barnwell, who could be a tight end, could be an offensive lineman. We'll see down the road. He is also from Virginia. So two on offense of the three so far. We'll talk about Lamont Payne and the defense a little bit later. But, Ryan, let's start with quarterback. It's a spot that everybody constantly wants to focus on, no matter what recruiting cycle it is. Penn mm-hmm. State has what would appear to me to be a early set of front runners that they've Post it quite a few times each. Yeah. So, I mean, to me right now, I'm focused on three guys at quarterback, right? We know about Dante Moore uh, out of Detroit. Of course, he's, you know, arguably the, the top ranked quarterback, depending on where you look. Uh, I, I have no doubt in my mind that he would be 
if Mike Yurkovich could just pick somebody, he'd be the guy. Uh, but I also think Jaden Rashada out of California and then Cam Edge out of, out of Smyrna, Delaware are two guys that, you know, to me, I kind of put them in tier one. Now, realistically, you know, probably more, more might really kind of be tier one. And then the other two are kind of uh, tier two. But uh, when I, when I look at this, I think Dante Moore is not going to be easy to get. Um, now, following his visit for the whiteout game and even um, his visit back for the last bash. I mean, we did definitely hear more positive things, which is, you know, what I would expect. I mean, Penn state felt good uh, leaving out of those visits, but it's going to be hard to beat Notre Dame, man. It's going to be hard to beat Michigan here. I mean, to me, it just feels like those two are sitting at the top and then everybody else is kind of fighting for three, four, fifth. Uh, And that's kind of where I think Penn state is now with Rashada, for example, him coming all the way out from California twice Man, I mean, come on that that doesn't that doesn't happen all the time when you're no. on unof- unofficial visits. I mean, how many how many guys have come out here for unofficial visits from California? I mean, I, I can't think of many. I can think of a no. couple for official visits, you know, with Penn State paying, uh, but not unofficials. Uh, and then with Cam Edge, I mean, to me, um, Cam Edge might be the most interested, but I, I feel like those other two maybe be ahead of have him ahead of him right now on Penn State's board. So all three of them, with so far to go, I would still say are realistic and guys we need to follow. Uh, Right now, I think Rashad would be would be the best case scenario as far as who's realistic, and then as far as um you know high enough on Penn State's board. I think right now Ole Miss is Penn State's top competitor there. Uh, obviously, we he needs to take more visits, and you know that stuff will get sorted out to the spring. But if there's a guy I have circled right now, it would it would be Rashad. So Jaden Rashad is whose highlight I was playing a few moments ago, and I'll throw that up one more time here as we finish this quarterback conversation. But, yeah, the fact that he's visited so many times already is just really what catches my eye. I mean, a guy pays his way basically to come here uh, multiple times across the country. It's not like there's a direct flight that's really easy for people to get from uh, Pittsburgh, California, to State College, Pennsylvania. So I think that tells you a lot, and you're 100% right on more in that, if Penn State had not, if, if, if this was NFL free agency where you're just trying to lure a guy with, uh, you know, you're able to just lure a guy whoever you want, uh, yeah, more would be the guy Penn State would do that with. But there's going to be a lot of challengers there. All right, so those are the three guys to keep an eye on at quarterback. Let's move on to running back where, at least in my mind, and you'll tell me if I'm wrong, but at running back, there's not exactly the uh, clear as day, obvious standout. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we might expect from Penn State, a school that's recruited to position really well. It's just not that way this year, and uh, I think you're going to open the bidding probably with Dale and Smothers. More offers have to go out here. I mean, it, yeah. it's simple to me. I just don't see – there's not like those two or three guys that are like, okay, you know, Penn State's in, in a good spot here. They're focusing in. Uh, on these guys. I just don't see that. I mean, Dalen Smothers makes the most sense from he, he was up here in the summer. He's been very high on Penn State. You know, so from that perspective, I feel like he will be very much uh, in the mix and will probably come back here again. Uh, I, now, the two other guys that like I have listed kind of to keep an eye on, uh, Penn State just went and saw Richard Young uh, out of, out of uh, you know, South Florida. He's like the number one running back in the country. If he comes to visit, sweet. I mean, that's just the fact that they were down there last weekend. I wanted to mention that. But to me, it's, you know, probably more of a long shot than anything else. And then Marquise Williams from Bishop McDevitt, who I, I'm not sure if Penn State – like, I know Penn State's very interested, but, like, I, I there's still – I get the impression there's still need to see more. Uh, and it's just from when I was watching Marquise this year, um, he's incredibly talented running back. There's no denying that. But he's small. I mean, he's probably like 5'8", 160, 170. I mean, he's he's not a big back. And if you just look at what Penn State's brought in over the years, they they don't do that much anymore. I mean, Mark Allen's like the last one that, you know, was kind of fit what, right. what Marquise Wilson Williams is. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's 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 my um, thought with Williams. I mean, again, he's he's from their backyard, but I just I just from what I've seen and just the fact that, that he hasn't visited more, it kind of shows me that they maybe have, um, you know, either want to see him grow quite a bit more or, or are kind of focusing elsewhere. So, look, th- this is another position that offers have to go out at. I can go on and all day about these guys, but uh, Dalen Smothers would be probably the ideal guy right now just because he visited. But, you know, I, I, I don't really project any of these guys to, like, end up at Penn State right now. So, more yeah, offers yeah. to go out. I mean, we'll go from there. Go ahead. It is one that I think spring practice visits and summer camp next year is going to tell us a lot more about than what we already mm-hmm. know. Junior day is the same kind of a thing. You're right. It's the one spot, at least to me, on offense where you could very 
easily imagine the fact that Penn State will pick up a commitment at running back, but it's going to be from someone who does not currently have an offer. So we'll see how that shakes out. But it is definitely not as clear cut at that position as it's been in years past. Let's move on now to receiver. Okay, so you have a list of guys here you sent me that are tier one, tier two. I mean, they could really potentially load up at the position in this class, but they don't have to because they just did that in the class of 2022, of course. So I think everyone knows Rodney Gallagher is a two-sports star. He's going to have schools trying to get him to play basketball and football at the next level. Penn State, of course, is one of them. And then you have some guys who recently picked up offers and have been on Penn State's board for a while. So it's a nice group of players that they have to work with here, and they come from all different parts of the country. Well, that's the key. They're from all over. Okay, like the Mid Atlantic. This is kind of what I've been talking about with Omari Evans committed, right? That they they have Rodney Gallagher and Ajani Shakir. I think both of those guys make sense. They're realistic to end up here. And now, of course, they offer Kenny Johnson too, who's also from this area. So those three would have to be the three that you have circled right now, just because you know they're going to be visiting a lot. You know, Penn State's pretty interested. Um, but when you when you get away from those three, you have Bryson Rogers from Wiregrass down outside of Tampa. Good player. Ronan Hannafin's not someone I've talked about a ton. He was up here in the summer, and Penn State's pretty interested in him. I, I kind of I'm unsure if he would be tier one. It probably maybe a little bit more tier two, but I'm trying to get a feel for where he's at. But then all these other guys like Santana Fleming, British Mitchell, um, Noah Rogers was up here, and I, was it Christian Hamilton? I'm not sure. Well, either either Rogers or Hamilton were up here. I forget which one off the top of my head. I apologize, um, but. But these, like again, these are all guys just kind of from outside the area who I think they do have interest. But you know whether they come uh, all the way up here to play is kind of right now. I'm a little uh, loop, not just hesitant to to really say Penn State's in a great spot. I mean, like Santana Fleming, for example, he's a superstar stud. He's going to have Penn State in his top schools, but until he gets up here and visits, like it's it's hard for me to really you know project him to end up here, um, <laughs> let alone just get an official visit. Really, to be honest, so uh, it's it's no doubt Rodney Gallagher. Up here, Kenny Johnson and Johnny Shakir kind of somewhere here. And then it's just kind of a pool of everybody else. And then when you look at how many guys they've taken in 2022, for example, you know, they're loading up there on guys. It, it tells me that this will probably be a little bit of a smaller class. And there's a lot of talent there. But until, you know, maybe either Gallagher commits and then they can focus on some other guys or, or even even I think even like Johnny Shakir would make the most sense out of that group as far as the first commitment. I think Kenny Johnson has a lot of interest, but he's still kind of new and he'll probably get more offers. But those three, man, Ronnie Gallagher, Kenny Johnson, Johnny Shakir, that's where you focus in on. And then maybe Bryson Rogers too. He did come up here for the whiteout, and I do think he'll be back for another visit. So he's kind of in that fringe. And then really it's just a pool of a bunch of other guys who, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so – I guess my biggest takeaway is we get ready to slide on over to the tight end spot where Penn State already maybe has one commitment, maybe not, depending on how Matthias Barnwell grows, is that your recruiting on offense at this point is very much, I don't think the word influx is fair, but there's certainly a lot to figure out here. And most of that comes down to the fact that Penn State, in each of the three positions we already talked about, feels pretty good about a guy or two or feels strongly about a guy or two. And then after that, there's a bunch of guys that they like who also like them, but to various degrees and various levels and things like that. So keep that in mind as we move forward on the Blue White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast to tight end, again, with Matthias Barnwell. Committed to Penn State, decommitted from Penn State, has now recommitted to Penn State. Could be a tight end, could be an offensive lineman, could even maybe be a defensive lineman. So you definitely can imagine Penn State, because of that, wants to add at least one more player at that position. And Ryan, the offer list, again here, this is a deep group of about five guys that they're focused on. And I could see really just about any of these five, even six maybe, uh, committing at some point or the other. Well, look, it's Joey Schlafer. I mean, I I've kind of have him penciled in. Uh, maybe I maybe I'm getting ahead of myself there a little bit, but I, I feel like Schlafer is somebody who will be here with a matter of time. And then what happens after that can depend on maybe what Barnwell tells the the staff, or or really maybe what I should say is however many guys they're able to add after that could really kind of impact Barnwell and maybe potentially where he ends up. Now maybe I'm totally wrong with that, but like for example, if they add Schlafer, if they somehow get like Neo Avery. And then maybe somebody like Nicholas Harbor down the road. Um, I think Marcus Dixon is they're interested in him. I'm not sure if I put him in the same tier as Avery or Harbor uh, or and Schlafer. I put him in that top tier too. But but I guess my point is if you know if they if they 
end up in a class where you have four tight ends committed and, and, and Barnwell is one of those four. Uh, to me, that makes it an easier case for Penn State to maybe try and get him to be an offensive tackle, although I'm sure Matthias doesn't really want to hear that. So uh, it'll just be interesting to see what they do here because there's a lot of guys. I mean, Neo Avery was, I think, close to committing to Georgia. And then, you know, maybe kind of from the things I've gathered, you know, talking to Penn State was part of the reason maybe why he held off there because Penn State, you know, was pushing really hard for him. And I'm not saying they're the reason he held off, but uh, just more conversations with them, I think, made him – kind of realized he was rushing a little bit. Nicholas Harbour is just a freak. I mean, like, I don't I don't really put him as – I'm listing as a tight end because that's the position he's saying I should list him as. But he could be a defensive end. He could just do all types of different things. Or an so, Olympic sprinter, one or the other. Yeah, it would be a same boat. You know, that, that'd, be, that'd be cool to watch in uh, six years from now. But uh, Preston Zinter, too, is just one other guy out of Massachusetts. And then Andrew Pellier, too, two guys out of Mass that I think we should mention. I don't believe Zinter's visited yet. Um, he's Zach Zinter's younger brother. Of course, Zach ended up at Michigan. Penn State recruited him pretty hard. Uh, Repellier did visit. He was here September 1. Um, just for a random practice, actually. He didn't start school yet, and he was able to come down. Uh, September 1 is the first day that guys can visit then after that August dead period. So he came down, just toured, watched camp or watched practice. So I uh, kind of, like I said, those guys are kind of that second tier I need to see more from before I really think that they're realistic. But to me, it's obviously Barnwell committed. Uh, Schlafer, I feel like that's going to happen at some point. And then Neo Avery, to me, would probably be the next, like, true target at tight end that Penn State absolutely wants. And if they were able to get all three of them and you just have Harbor as this like freak athlete kind of guy, um, I think they'd be very, very happy with that. All right. Moving on to offensive line. And, and again, I think at this point I'll recap the offense as soon as we get through here, move on to the defense. But as we said, you do have Alex Birchmeyer committed. I'm looking at your list of possible tier one, tier two guys here. And I guess what jumps out to me that I think is going to be interested, interesting to the listeners is that I don't know if you did this intentionally or not, but I will say this, unlike some previous classes, I think I feel equally as good about Penn State chances of landing a couple top flight guards as I do tackles. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if that's always been the case. At least to me, it's felt like in many previous cycles, you felt really good about maybe where they were going to go with the interior, but the offensive tackles might have been considered more projects, or vice versa. And I don't think that's the well, case in this class. Well, it's just it's just deeper interior. You know, there's yeah. a lot of guys who are good, uh, solid offensive linemen, but they're six four, they're six three, right. and they're not going to grow to six five plus. So, I mean, to me, when when we're talking offensive tackles right now, right? I mean, Evan Link and Luke Montgomery. And then I'll add Javen Williams in there out of why I'm missing. Those are the three that I'm really kind of focusing in on, right? Yep. Um, obviously, Montgomery would be awesome to get. I don't think he will be easy to get out of Ohio. Ohio State's on him hard. He has so many awesome offers. I mean, I just think it's going to be hard. Notre Dame's in there. Michigan's in there. Uh, just when you look at the talent of, of all the, you know, those top programs, it's just it doesn't. You know, it's not like Penn State's duking out with one other school. They're duking out with like five or six major programs, right. and usually that just makes it difficult. I think Evan Link is definitely realistic. He, he was up for the whiteout game. He doesn't talk much, uh, but I, I definitely get the impression from talking to some Penn State people that they feel good about where they sit right now. Uh, again, he's, he's one of those guys who doesn't open up our recruitment much, although Adam Freeman did just get him for an interview recently, so check that out uh, if you're on the site. And then Javen Williams is another guy who – you know, he – so he came up to Penn State, had an okay camp, wasn't great. Like, he didn't really stand out to Penn State at that camp. Uh, but they knew there was some potential there. I mean, he, he has an awesome shot put. I think it was like 50-some feet. Uh, and then he has an awesome discus too. I wish I had those numbers off the top of my head. But I know he really impressed them, you know, for those track and field numbers. And then what they've seen on film this year mm -hmm. has just kind of made it impossible for them to not offer. So those three guys definitely at tackle. And then there's just so many guards that – I just it could go so many ways. Like Chase Basantis, for example, is absolutely one of their top guys. And I know Chase did an interview recently where he didn't really mention Penn State. I wouldn't think about that too much. Um, guys, when you're a top guy and you have 40 some offers, sometimes schools do slip. And I know that things like, oh, if this is top school, why would he slip? But I've seen it before. Uh, so just don't, and especially because a lot of these interviews happened right after games too. Like I believe that one was just a great right after game. 
Um, personally, that's sometimes why I don't do interviews right after the game. I'll wait till like a Sunday, for example, because guys are just coming off the field. They're not thinking. They want to go see their buddies. want to go see the girlfriend screaming to them over the side of the fence. It, it happens. So I've seen it. I've had it happen to me. I've seen other colleagues do it, too. So just keep that in mind with Basantis. Uh, Kobe Keenum out of Alabama. He was up already. Um, I think he's been – excuse me. He's been up twice. He was in the summer and then for the whiteout game. Josh Miller. I think Josh Miller is going to be here this upcoming weekend for the Illinois game. I'm going to double check with him. But he, that was the plan. We got Dylan Senda out of uh, – Michigan. Antonio Tripp, of course, he's still in the mix. Josh Padilla out of Wayne, uh, Dayton, Ohio. And then Kanaja Harris out of IMG. I mean, all of those guys are top offensive guard prospects. Of course, Alex Birchmeyer is going to be a guard too. So, you know, to me, I think Penn State wish it was the opposite. You know, I think they wish they had more quality tackles that they could find. And the fact that they're taking Andre Rui now and when, you know, they don't really have a lot of class left in the room, Tells yeah. me that they are maybe a little concerned with the depth of tackle depth that they see in next year's class. That's just kind of how I read it, at least. Uh, but there's no doubt that there's a bunch of offensive guards here, quality, and they should get at least three of them, I would think. And on you know, two, and then of course Birchmar. It's the Blue White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast. He's Ryan Snyder. I'm Greg Pickle. We are taking a closer look at the class of 2023 Penn State football recruiting efforts to try and figure out what a dream class might look like. Again, if for some reason maybe you skipped to the middle of this or aren't interested in the offense or you wanted to get to the part of the podcast where we talked about the guys and didn't give you the ground rules, they are quite simple. It's not just a list of five stars. It is a look at who Penn State feels really good about and vice versa, and it could realistically end up here at each position. By my count, Ryan, I'm thinking something like this for the offense. A quarterback, a running back, two or three receivers, two tight ends, maybe end up with three and five offensive linemen. Does that sound about in the ballpark to you? Yeah, I can see it being four offensive linemen just because when you add in Roy and then especially because they're still going with Emil Wagner. Um, But, it's you know, let's see who (laughs) – this is what I – this was the disclaimer at the beginning. Let's see who transfers out. Uh, let's see what happens in spring, you know, how guys developed. Um, five alignment is, is possible. I would I would lean maybe towards a little towards four at the moment. I would think maybe two guards, maybe three. And, you know, if they can get two quality tackles out of it, they will, and that's what would get it to five. Uh, but it's just whether they can land those quality tackles. I mean, they would have to get both probably Javen Williams and Evan Link, uh, which is possible, uh, definitely possible. All right, time to move on to the defense here. Brent Price side of the ball. Uh, Penn State is uh, not does not yet have a commitment along the defensive line. It does have a commitment from a player who will play defense in the future. That's Lamont Payne. Again, more on him when we get into the secondary. But, Ryan, let's look at the defensive line here. Defensive end recruiting has been pretty darn good in the James Franklin, Franklin era. Defensive tackle as well, but I think that – It's also been a spot where there's been some of the bigger disappointments in terms of misses, I think, have come at defensive tackle. Obviously, Christian Wilkins is the first example you always think of in that department. But um, let's start at the defensive end. Uh, There's some guys here who are pretty frequent visitors to Penn State, or at least they have been up to this point. Mm -hmm. And all – I mean – I think there's four or five defensive ends who are literally – legitimately realistic in this class to end up at Penn State. Yeah. Um Yeah. So basically my tier one here would be Mason Robinson, of course, out of McDonough. And after watching him play against LaSalle, I'm fully in the in the boat that he is someone they need to push very hard for. And they always I think they always kind of were, but just seeing it myself, uh, he's he's just getting better and better. So Mason would kind of be like maybe my top guy. I don't know if he's the top on their board, but his top as far as realistic and a player they need to get. Uh, Cam Lenhart from IMG, of course, out of Staten Island. He's kind of right there too, then. You know, Lenhart's been up here twice now. I've talked about this in previous podcasts, you know, coming up here from IMG is not easy to do. And then when you, when you keep doing it, um, twice in what, three weeks, uh, that, that, that speaks, um, speaks volumes, I guess, as far as interest is concerned. Uh, David Ajave, I think it's Ajave. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but uh, from St. John's and College High, of course, in D.C. He's been up here, I believe, twice now already. And then Dylan Gooden, um, of course, Doc Gooden's younger son. He hasn't been up yet uh, from good counsel, but uh, he's definitely somebody that they are very interested in. I'll throw Eric Eric Gardner, too, from Archbishop Wood in there. Um, so I think they're watching his film a little bit more to kind of gauge how hard they want to pursue. Uh, but to me, you know, Mason Robinson, Ken Lanhart, they they feel like they're definitely leaning towards Penn State right now. And, you know, I could I could see realistically those two being part of this class here. Uh, and I don't know, maybe not this year, but early in 2022, I think that would be realistic. To me, a defensive tackle, it's all about Jason Moore. Tell mm-hmm. me tell me why I'm wrong. But to me, it's I mean, you <sighs> look awesome. at some of these other names and it'd be great for Penn State if it was able to land some of these guys. No question. But to me. 
it all starts with landing Jason Moore. Yeah, he's tier one by himself, basically, right? I mean, I watched him play against Imitep earlier this year. The guy was in a cast uh, or, you know, one of those air casts leading up into the game, right? Um, all week. So, you know, he's injured. He comes into this game and, you know, Imitep has a good line I and mean, they have some quality players there. And you could tell he was injured. So there were times where, um, you know, he, he kind of had to take a player two off, I guess. But whenever he wanted to disrupt, he disrupted. Um, whenever he, whenever there was a big play, man, he was there. So he's actually playing more defensive end for Dematha, but I project him to be bumping inside down down the road. So yes, he is very much uh, the, the the guy to focus on. I think Penn State's also a good start. I'm not really ready to say they're like the true favorite, um, but he's you know the dream the dream guy, no doubt. He's he's there. And then as far as who else would join him, this is tough because there's a lot of guys that I think are realistic and have interest in Penn State, but maybe yeah. for one reason or another, it doesn't work. So like Jameel Lyons, for example. Jameel Lyons is a player that I know Penn State likes, but I'm also, I believe he needs to improve a little bit academically just from what I've been told. I, if that's not true, I apologize, but I believe that's the case. Uh, so just kind of how he progresses in the months ahead uh, will be very important with that. Um, and then, you know, Sadir Mitchell as well. I think they like him a lot. Sadir's just so big man i mean like he's I, I wonder a little bit if if he's getting too big for just what penn state wants i mean there's a lot of guys like he'll he'll land somewhere and be awesome penn state usually likes their their defensive tackles a little bit smaller and then they they kind of progress them up you know a lot of the guys they land are you know more so in the high 280s uh and then and then they like to stack on the muscle then so just it just i wonder if he fits what we've seen from penn state in the past so that's that's just something to keep an eye on Joel Starlings, I think they like a lot. He hasn't visited yet. Will Norman's another guy down at IMG they like a lot. Uh, hasn't visited yet. And then De- Devin Houston from J- St. James in Maryland. He just got an offer the other day. Uh, so I think he's going to definitely be a guy that we're talking about a lot. I plan to actually speak with him uh, hopefully tonight or tomorrow, and then we'll have a story up this week. But, um, you know, right now it feels like Jason Moore, and then there's a bunch of guys who, like, I could see ending up here. But for one reason or another, it's hard for me to say, like, yeah, that guy's realistic right now. Linebacker. Let's move on to there. I think that everyone's aware, of course, you just saw Phil Picci- Picciotti. Is that or Picciotti? Picciotti. No, Picciotti. Picciotti. Okay. Dude, yeah, right. I spent like a whole night making sure I got it right. Picciotti. Picciotti. All right. Sorry. Well, I'm going to let you talk about it so <laughs> you can screw it up or not. But I love Penn State's offer board at linebacker right now. Tamir Robinson is a part of this. Uh, Josiah Trotter, Jordan Hall. I mean, there's some other guys I won't read them all because you're going to do that. But I really like the options Penn State has here. And I I think that we're starting to see this group kind of not, I don't want to say separate itself, but certainly it's coming into focus in terms of who's who's really interested and who's maybe kind of interested and who's maybe not all that interested as well, or at least it's not as much as we thought. So my my linebacker board is going to probably surprise some people here on far as who I have as tier one and tier it's two. It surprised okay. me for the record. Yeah. So Tamir Robinson, absolutely, right? I mean, if there's a true tier one and everybody else, Tamir's probably tier one and everybody else. Pachati is also not far behind. I mean, like I said, you could put tier tier one is just Tamir and then maybe tier two would be Pachati. And then you know who I also think is very much there is Tony Rojas. Uh, from Fairfax, Virginia. And he's a guy who we're probably not talking about enough, uh, but Penn State absolutely wants him and is pushing very hard for him. And I think that there's a, I think he, I wouldn't be surprised if he committed before Pachati, to be honest with you. Um, now, I, like Pachati, we've been projecting, projecting for a while now. And just more I talk to him and more I talk to his coaches, like I, I, I don't get the impression he's really in a rush. Now, of course, I say that he'll, he'll commit in you know, a month from now, but. Um, you know, he just picked up a Notre Dame offer. I think he's going to go visit there. And like, I do expect him to end up at Penn State at some point. I still think Penn State is a, is a firm favorite, but I just don't, I don't get the feel that he's going to, to rush this. So I just, I'm curious to see how that plays out. Tony Rojas is, I think he's definitely favoring Penn State. I've only been able to have a handful of conversations with him, but talking to Penn State people, like they love him. He was up here at camp, absolutely blew it. Um, you know, just, just what is he around like a four or five? I mean, he, he was, he was excellent and they, yeah, they really like what they've seen. Yeah, Sorry, I think I had myself okay. muted there, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not blow up, at, or he did not blow it at Penn State's camp. He blew up, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but look, and then so my tier two, I guess, it would be is Samaj, Samaj Bridgman, Desai Trotter, Grant Tucker, and Jordan Hall, and maybe you could say they're tier three. And I, I think that'll surprise some people. But I'm just, I'm really trying to 
get it out there that Pachati and Rojas are very much in the mix. And I think maybe they're favoring Penn State a little bit more than some other guys. And and that's why I maybe have them a, a, a peg above, you know, Tr- Trotter or Tucker or or even Jordan Hall, for example. Bridgman, I, I kind of get the impression that Penn State's trying to see a little bit more from Bridgman this year. Maybe I'm wrong with that, but uh, I just I'm not I'm not getting like these vibes that like he's moving up their board. If anything, I get the vibe that some other guys are moving above them. So let's see. But uh, Pachati and Robinson are like they're they might be one and two right now, and then Rojas and a couple other guys kind of. Uh, you know, in that next tier, but Rojas is just, I think he's realistic and I think he could end up here within the coming months. Josiah Trotter, obviously the name everyone's going to gravitate to at that position. Penn State seemingly doing a pretty nice job with him after not really having a chance with his brothers. We'll still have to wait and see. I get the sense he'll end up somewhere Yeah, they else. didn't offer his brother. And I mean, like, just to clarify, I mean, I was, I've had talks with people about it and Penn State pretty much said like they made a mistake there to the family. And, you know, I think that that's good and that's going to help them a lot. Um, but I am curious to see if, you know, in the end, you know, with Ohio State there, Clemson there, uh, who I miss in South Carolina. I mean, I still kind of think it'll be Clemson or Ohio State and then Penn State, but we'll see. Finally, the secondary. Lamont Payne, Western PA player, is committed to Penn State. Feels to me, Ryan, like corner is a spot like running back where we're going to have to see some more offers go out. But there are some top names to know at safety. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, corner, like I, I like Antonio Robinson a lot from uh, Florida Christian School in Miami. Um, he definitely got to keep an eye on. He was up here earlier in the year. And then Thomas Williams um, from Powdersville, South Carolina. I, I, I think Williams has a lot of interest in Penn State. I think Penn State's still kind of trying to watch his film to see how hard they want to pursue. Um, but more more cornerback offers will have to go out there. I, I might be missing somebody off the top of my head. But it, it definitely feels like a, a heavier safety board. Uh, to, to me, Cam Selden is very much um, maybe their top safety prospect. He's another guy who doesn't talk a ton. But uh, every time I bring him up to people, they just rave about him. So he's a guy I need to see. He's from – um, I think he's kind of from like the, close to the Chesapeake Bay, like in an area of Virginia where there's just not a ton of football. Like it's not Norfolk, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like north of that. And it's kind of smaller area, but people rave about him. I got I got to try and get down there basically is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Christian Garrett's very much in the mix. Ramir Stewart, of course, and Emotep Charter. I, I think those guys are all in the mix. Um, Khalil Ali too. You know, I think I've said it before. I mean, I think Khalil wants to be part of this class, and I think Penn State definitely interested. I think they just want to get a better feel for what he brings from a speed perspective. Uh, Zabari Sandy, too, and Musa Kane. Uh, Musa Kane from Blair Academy is somebody who uh, we probably should talk about a little bit more. He was just here. Was it Villanova, Greg? I forget. I yes. Was for one of them. Was it Villanova? I think it was. Uh, and he's a, he's a guy I need to, to get in touch with and chat about a little bit. But Cam Selden, to me, I mean, just from talking to people, he is the guy that they are – they are raving about and that they absolutely want. And then maybe Christian Garrett ahead of Ramir Stewart, believe it or not. I'm not sure. I might be a little bit wrong with that. Um, but, but you know, I, I would expect, you know, two safeties, probably two cornerbacks, maybe maybe a few more. I mean, they, they, they've they taken a lot of good defensive backs over the last couple of years. So you think it's going to even out one year, and then they just keep they just keep piling on defensive backs. So it will probably be another deeper class now that I said that. All right, well, before we wrap up this edition of the Blue White Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast, let's make some predictions again. And I want to kill the Cam Selden video here because obviously we're not talking only about Cam at this point. But um, more players, we'll just do this rapid fire style just for fun. Uh, We won't make a record of these picks in case they end up being wrong, but I'm sure somebody somewhere will. Uh, will. More players on offense or more players on defense in this class? Your initial gut reaction is what? Oh man, um, I, I I will say offense uh, just because I think it could be you know you could see a handful of tight ends you could see a handful of wide receivers and and another offensive deep deep offensive line class but yeah you, you could say that by, about linebacker too so. Mm-hmm. I'll lean towards offense, but the more I think about it, it could be defense. <laughs> I was going to take the defense, but I gave you I'm the hedged. first pick, so you got it. There you go. Yeah. All right, good deal. Um, in terms of the number that we ultimately land on here, again, this is an inexact science, and we're over a year from when these guys can sign. My number is going to end up being 23. What's yours? 23. Yeah, 23. It's kind of right in the middle. I mean, that's the easy hedge there. I, the one number – I mean, the one thing everyone keeps saying is they doubt it will be over 25. It won't be like this year's class, uh, but they don't see it, you know, being one of those 18, you know, 17 kind of classes. So I, I just the number what I keep hearing is like somewhere between 20, 25. I'll go with 23. Will Penn State get a five star? Yes or no? 
No, I just don't see it right now. I mean, uh, put it this way: out of out of the guys that are presently ranked on Rivals uh, as five stars, I don't see it now. Jason Moore makes sense to becoming a five star, so he would be the guy that I kind of have circled. And then if somebody maybe moves up, um, I'm trying to think of who who am I missing there? Um, like to me, Nicholas Harbor is a five star potential guy. Right. Um, There's only I'm seven of them right now on Rivals. For those wondering, There's only seven of those. Well, yeah, there but like, but who's ranked like? Do you have it in front of you? Like, who's ranked like twenty nine to thirty? Well, like, as there's, our there's as our else. longtime listeners know, I never type while I'm doing the podcast. So <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, no, I do have it up in front of me here. I'm just scrolling down through the list. Jason Moore is like twenty eighth or something, or maybe thirty second. I know. And then there's one other yes. guy. Is it Chase Basantis? Chase Basantis Pesant- like- is twenty nine. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and those Dante two Moore is right thirty five. Okay, so those three right now are all realistically could be five stars because rivals usually. So the way rivals does it is, you know, they they do a handful of five stars, and then as the class goes on, they just kind of keep adding to it. They like to, and I, I don't disagree with this. I kind of think it's smart. Is they let, they'd rather keep adding guys than have guys as five stars and drop them, which I I agree with. I think that's I think that's a good way to do it. So, um, but like anywhere, if you're anywhere top thirty five, top forty, and you realistically have a good chance of being a five star player. So, um, to me right now. Do I? I think Jason Moore is the most realistic of those guys. He won't be easy to get. Um, I'll say no, but uh, if it's anyone, it's going to be him. I think I'm going to go with yes because I like optimism, Ryan. Because it's a great oh, Monday here. They for, can be looked bad. Uh, it's a great <laughs> week for Penn State to get back on the field, and it's a great week to make bold predictions that may or may not. Hey, I got a prediction true. for you. Go I got for one it. for you. Will Sean Clifford play against Ohio State? I think so. Yes. Um, I would be very surprised. Yeah, I, I. So yeah, so you know, we're recording this prior to James Franklin's Tuesday news conference. Which, let's all be honest with ourselves, he's not going to give an update that anybody <laughs> wants uh, to hear. It's going to be guarded. It's going to be. We'll see. That might not even be. We'll see. It might just be nothing. So time will tell. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday will we see Practice. him? Yeah. Yes. I'm starting to think Wednesday is the day you all need to circle and be on the board at uh, 5 o'clock because I think we might get an answer then. We'll see. We very well may. I, at this point, would be surprised if he plays against Illinois. I would also be surprised if he did not play against Ohio State. So we'll see how that shakes out. I'm starting to agree with that. Yeah. Uh, That's all why right. I asked it. <laughs> yep. Nope. Good stuff. Well, don't forget. Or don't forget to check out the website bluewhiteillustrated.com for the latest Penn State football news and recruiting. We'll be back throughout the week with the BWI Daily Edition with Thomas Frank Carr. Ryan's going to have plenty of recruiting news leading up to Illinois, and we'll have team and game coverage as well. So check it out bwi.rivals.com. Leave us uh, some feedback whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on Apple, Spotify. Or wherever you get your audio, we'll be looking for your feedback, your reviews, your comments and suggestions for us. And until then, we will catch you next time. Only if they're good, yes. But if you missed (laughs) any of this, we'll be doing uh, from time to time an updated look at Penn State's dream class. But that has been another edition of the Blue Way Illustrated Penn State Football and Recruiting Podcast. We'll catch you next time.